two high-level players on the special saves. That's right, folks. Beastie QT playing as England versus 3DB as the Chinese. Let's get into this one. Oh, that's right. I know everyone's hyped off. They heard that. You didn't. No one realized what was coming. The stream's like, what? We got the good one now. And it's gonna be an outside as well. A map that actually is pretty cool for both these sieves. Both these sieves can actually heavily leverage this map. For a start, you can do this as the the Chinese instantly out with the mill onto the deer stack, and then the sheep will gather around there as well. Maximum food income for the early phase of the game. And meanwhile, that's also a potential option for an England player with the deer being so close. A lot of these English players tend to just go instantly into farmlands though. I think it's a little bit of a missed opportunity. And in this matchup, you should be trying to find a way to set the tempo, but it can be difficult. Reason being is the Chinese, there's no pushover in the feudal. This is a sieve that can actually match the pace of the English due to the supervision from the Imperial officials. But we'll see if we get to that stage. We'll see if it comes to the outpost spamming or if we're going to look to go prolonged in the castle. By the way, this is a game that was played yesterday by Beastie. So, uh, what's the date today? The date today is the 10th. So, he played this on the 9th. He was playing it um, at some point in the day, I think just before his series. So, it's kind of cool to see him actually whipping out England up against the Chinese because... I think on the more defensive maps, this is kind of a weird, skewed matchup where both of these sieves love to actually like punish other sieves that kind of rely on the natural defenses of the map. Outside can be one of those maps where that happens. But the interesting part, I don't know what it is with the generation recently. Maybe it's just like luck more than anything else. But I feel like almost always when I'm seeing England and China right now, they get this generation. They don't get the tight wall generation. Sometimes when HRE or Abbas is in the game, they actually get spawned a lot closer to the mountainside giving them a natural defense, which is what you want if you're going to be a booming type sieve. But this layout usually tends to kind of come out a lot more when China and England are in the game, where you, well, the, the Northern player does get quite a defensible location. Overall, neither of them just have a full-on pushed up against the wall situation. That being said, I did just highlight the defensibility of B's location. It's going to be very hard for BC to assault here, just because there's really no clear wide open entrance. You can see this small gap here that can easily be walled by B, and you can see that the wraparound on the north side, like it, it will put you out of position. The biggest concern if you have to wrap around like this is the English, is you can't just instantly do it without protection. So usually when you're English, like the best case scenario is if you have a clear entrance at the front of the opponent's base. Because you move across, you drop your outpost, reinforcements arrive straight into where you're entering, and you're very comfortable. The more you have to extend around, the longer it takes. Because if you have to say, go to the north here and wrap round to get to the back of B's base before you can siege in, then you need to put down outposts. If you don't put down outposts, what will happen is B, with a few horsemen, can easily just waddle around the side and punish you for it. Oh, looks like the stream's for some reason getting my taskbar. It's a bit weird. Why is the... T what in the goose? Well, it is only for the stream. I just don't know why. Focus on the game, and I'll try to sort that as we go. YouTube side right now are going to be confused. Like, what are you on about? There's no taskbar. We Gucci. Huh. That's a weird one. I'll have to sort it after this game, folks. Apologies for that. I'll focus on it from a recording perspective, at least working. I'll fix the taskbar afterwards. You guys aren't finding out too much about me. There's nothing. Everything there is boring. There's no link to, like, a, a porn application. Damn, the scandals. All right, anyway, let's focus on the game because, like I said, this should be a good one. These players, both of them incredibly high level. BC, of course, sitting in the top 10 and fifth place right now, having, I think, a second account. B, I think his second account is Pepega, right? So he's sitting second as well. Uh, B, meanwhile, he took a little bit of a break. He done the winner stays on and then he kind of just went disappear for a few days. But back on the grind, 16th in the world right now, clearly prepping himself the Golden League, which is going to start in just a little bit over a week. And uh, he wants to be quickly in to solidify himself a place in those events. And it would be a crime if we didn't get to see him because this guy throws a lot of curveballs. Both of these players do, really. I think, like, Beastie, he's an exploitive type player. Like, he likes to take a slight edge and then just try to, like, milk that out. But he's very good at doing it, right? Like, sometimes watching that type of player can be boring because they don't take big risks. But the way he does it is actually pretty impressive. Meanwhile, B, I mean, honest to God, like, you, you turn up on a day, you watch them B. You try to anticipate what he's going to do. I, I I wouldn't want to be an analyst, right? If I had to sit there and predict like what B is going to do in a game, you'd be wrong 90% of the time because this guy tends to throw a lot of curveballs. For now, nothing too unorthodox. 
I love what he's doing with the Barbican Sun. Remember what we just talked about, about the wraparounds? Now you're being forced. Beastie's not going to be happy when he sees this because now not only has B protected his initial eco-gathering points, he's now forced you into an awkward situation where you have to wrap super wide to be able to access his base or you have to risk it for the biscuit and go through this small choke point where you could easily get cut off. So Barbican will be complete. Timing difference, really not that big. England, usually you want to be a little bit further ahead, like maybe you have three or four Lombos out by the time you see the tech up. But B leaves no wiggle room for it. And this is the power of the deer, right? At this stage in the game, instantly getting out there with a mill and Imperial official. It's such a big booster to China's early economy. Had this been sheep and berries, I think the timing would have been slightly delayed and you would have had a few Lombowmen out before you saw your opponent tech up. But now a frustrating situation for Beastie. Obviously, he's going to push a few Lombowmen to begin with and try to stage himself around the midpoint. But what he really needs to do is find a way of getting an outpost down in a comfortable position. But he's not even going to get that option. B, come on! All right, this is going to get nerfed. This will not be allowed for much longer. Stone Walls. Ah, uh, Stone Walls feudal is so dumb. I think I noticed Beastie tweeted, I believe it was yesterday about this, some, in regards to this. It's kind of, he's, I think he said it was kind of weird, like playing M4C and then coming back into pub games and experiencing Stone Walls. And he hopes it gets fixed soon. I guess this is the game he was talking about, folks. Because what do you do as Lombos? You now have no way of punishing. Oh, this is so dumb. I mean, Palisades would have denied you too, right? But this just infinitely denies you. You can't even sit here slowly peppering these down. There's nothing you can do. It's so, so dumb. So BC will have to reassess. This just might be a situation where you start having a kind of eco boom. And that doesn't feel good. Like against China, China has the edge there. Especially if you already invested in a few Lombowmen, if you maybe look, like, if you, luckily you didn't drop a Blacksmith. If you dropped a Blacksmith as well, like, this is, like, GG. You don't feel good at all. But there's still some wiggle room for him here. He's going to have to act fast, though. You can see the TC's already being constructed. BST could try to switch onto Stone himself and go for a secondary TC. I just feel like it's too delayed. Like, you just have to try and, like, play hard into maybe getting a quick Castle Age timing. So I think if you try to hang around and invest in Lombos now, you do nothing. This map is perfectly postured for B. The Stone Wall. Protects basically the only easy access choke point there was. And then you have the Barbagan Hassan covering the north side. Like, there's no way in for an English player. Yeah, BC gets the bad news. Right now, he's probably just face farming. He's like, what in the goose is going on here? This shouldn't be allowed. Oh, and just like that, B. Yeah, he is going to put the Imperial. That's why I'd be surprised if he didn't get the Imperial Academy. So he's just going to posture it differently. Almost like he's flaunting it. He sees the scout bat there. He's like, Mr. BC, I just want you to know <laughs> I'm doing this. This spawn is way too good not to. And he's even stonewall in the south. Oh, this is so disgusting. Why is this a thing? Oh, patches can't come soon enough, folks. I mean, I just don't see how BC plays England the way you you want to play England, right? His only choice is to tech up. And you can see that he's saving for it. I like that he done this. Like, he stopped at two Lombos. He's like, wasted investment, whatever. The good news is, at least, because you used the Council Hall, right? Because it's your landmark instead, you haven't invested an additional 150 wood into the Fuel Age pointlessly. So it's not the end of the world for Beastie, but it is difficult. Like, he has to be quick with the Castle Age, and then he has, to do, he has to do some of it very fast. My concern is, if B feels pressured, he might just put more stone walls. And then what do you do? More stone walls. <laughs> yep, what a totally reasonable <laughs> element. But don't worry, guys. We nerfed the build, be uh, build speed of, of stone walls. Yes, but China. Don't try to tell them they can't build walls. They built one they called a great wall, all right? Lombos at least wrap around the high ground. They can be a little bit frustrating up here, but it's going to feel pretty superficial in terms of damage that you can do. Yeah, the Lombos. We'll start firing on the villagers now. But B can react to it. It's only two, right? It's not like you've got five or six Lombos insta-sniping units here. In fact, if anything, he's probably just going to shift them to the back of the gold line so they're not exposed and then keep them working. Yeah, say that. B, 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 B. All right, that's a freebie. Tech up complete as well. So B needs to be careful. Like, because he went for two TCs in Imperial Academy, he actually needs to get as much value out of his eco line right now as possible. <laughs> and then the shivs are out. He's like, oh, screw this. He'll lose one more villager. But now he will go out to address the pitiful Lombard. I mean, only two of them. And my God, do they die fast. 12 damage. Why is it 12 damage on a village? I mean, that is a lot of damage. 
Right? You, you see the measly ship, you're like, that's got to be four damage, right? You would never expect to click on this unit and see that it does 12 damage. That's absurd. That, that is actually absurd. <laughs> Why? Why? I, I just don't get it. Why does a tiny ship... Oh, 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 the t -pose surface. We got it. All right, they fixed themselves. But seriously, why do they do 12 damage and a scout with an actual short sword does four? Can we just discuss this for a second? Like, would this not have made more sense if we gave the villagers the short swords and then gave the ships to the, the scouts? At least then I'd believe it. Oh, dear. All right, enough of my, like, you know, enough of my realism issues and my immersion being broken. As more immersion issues. This is just dumb. This is so dumb. B right now is sitting there. He's he's chuckling to himself. He's like, he knows how tilted Beastie's going to get by this as he arrives and sees this. Because Beastie right now, like, he has to be building stables, right? No, no, he's not. I, what? Okay. Beastie's like, screw this. He's hard on the stone. I think he might be considering going for a third TC himself to scale. Which is the right call here. Because B, although he's protected himself and he might be cackling right now, B has limited room to extend into, right? Like there's only so much room he's got here for the farmlands, for the military district. He's going to run out of room and have to come out soon. So realistically, BC can exploit this variable to his advantage by going ultra greed himself with a third TC and then prepping a big military force to bully him the moment he comes out of his base. In fact, you know what I'd love to see? I'd love to see BC pull one or two villages and literally just build his own walls. That would be a beautiful sense of irony. Alternatively, I just love to see a siege tower here. Like, I know that stone walls are pretty busted, but I do feel like nobody ever tries to utilize siege towers to fix that. I understand why to an extent. It's the fact that if there's a gate, you can't get off, right? Like, you can't get off the other side. It's such a meme. But there is a gate. The only issue is that the reason he doesn't want to play it here is because the barbican of sun. If there was a gate, say, on this side, yeah, you totally do it, right? You just basically get into the back of the base. If there was a gate in this small breach, you definitely do it because you can just instantly get into his base. But I do feel like I've seen situations where there are stonewall gates and people just don't instantly think, I'm going to build a siege tower because it's a meme, right? Siege towers are not seen as real useful things. Like, they are the second biggest possible meme in this game because in this specific game, Abbey of Kings would have been a possibility. Well, luckily, we don't get to see that. Instead, what we are going to see is a lot of villagers pulled forward. In the meantime, a shift into religion. Plenty of things for Beastie to gather here. Because this is the thing. Like, B, he's been a greedy boy. Right? Like, we, we talked about how Beastie understands B and how he wants to play. And he knows that B likes going late game. That's literally what B has said here. He's like, I'm not coming out until Imperial. Right? That, that's basically what he's screaming at his opponent right now. You can even see it in the food and gold he's gathering. He's going Imperial, whether you like it or not. So the best thing you can do is say, okay, you can go Imperial, but like, you're going to have to come out as soon as you have Imperial because you're running out of resources. So if I just take away all the passive gold income from Relics, I take these risky like you know, gold pockets and extend my influence across the mid-map with keep expansions, you can't extend yourself anymore. You can't expand, and instead, you're just going to starve in your base. Man, look at that. Rack's being prepped. So B understands what he wants to do. And I think he is going to wait for the Imperial before he pushes out with the Palace Guard. But they will come out quick. And that's something that Beastie is going to have to answer. And Beastie so far not showing any intention of really anti-armor units in his formation. Right? Like if you look at it, he hasn't built a single military building yet. I think Beastie is thinking about Imperial as well. The only military building he has is, of course, the landmark. So the only thing he has to defend him is Lombos. Lombos that will not fare well if a Zerg of Palace Guard come their way. <laughs> and there it is. You have to do it, right? It's a spit in the face. It's the irony used. If he's going to stonewall, I'm going to stonewall too. Ensuring now, in, in an awkward kind of situation would be a frustrating situation. If he wants to come out of his base, the goal now is to make sure that he can only come out in one direction. And if that is the case, it's very easy for you to leverage a resource advantage because while B will have a very big economy, right? We can see it with him being 20 ahead of Beastie. He won't have any way he can put that economy. You can see now Moon on those berry bushes. There's a gold vein back here. But after that, I mean, it really is nothing. 
So he will have to come out by, I'd say, about 20 minutes. That's when this game gets really awkward for B. Beastie. Using those keeps well. This is something I think a lot of people forget about. It's kind of baffling how many England players don't use keeps for building siege. It's a big saving if you think about it. Usually you'd have to pay 300 wood for the price of a mission to siege weapons. Instead, if you drop a keep a four point, it's your network of castles buffer. It's a strong point for you to retreat towards. And then it's also a siege workshop as it can build basically any unit you can get. Now the Trebs will look for access through the stone wall. I love the fact that he's parked a single longbow in here just to stop any in the instant repairs coming out. Nesta bees are being massed now by B. And these are the tanky ones. Yeah, astronomical clock tower. So they've got extra health up to 300 HP. You need to be careful. BC is going to need a spring or two. But right now, he's just maxing up on the, the, the trebs. And also maxing up on the relics. So about to go up to three. Already moving out for the fourth as well. It has to be said that this generation is quite nice for him as well. This weird little wiggle path to get through means he doesn't have to go through like the potentially contested or, or like boxed in choke points. I always love it when you get these generations, by the way. On maps like Altai, on French Pass as well, these sneak points. It just makes it a little bit more spicy, a little bit different. And what the hell is this network? Beastie? I think he's building a maze. It's like, ah, oh, hello, B. Welcome to my labyrinth. Good luck navigating it. <laughs> Was that evil sounding enough? I think so. Longbow is going to be annoying. Ram's now being built. B. I think at this point, Beast is nodding his head. is going, yeah, I deserve this. I definitely deserve this. And Villager being a little bit drunk off duty. Yes, the Bees attacks coming out. We'll look to punish the Villagers. I need to actually peel them back. I think, yeah, it should just be a quick wall, if anything. There it is. Just going to tap them quickly before his Villies die. Villagers really not taking that much damage from the Nest of Bees, though. A lot of it being absorbed by the Stone Walls. Those Stone Walls continue to be built up. Beastie has to be laughing now. The irony is not lost on us here. He's like, B, you wanted a fortress, bro. Let me help you with that. Let me give you somewhere safe to go and hide. Do you feel safe now? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Because you're my pet. Now, the one awkward issue for Beastie is he can't kill the... He can't easily kill the nest of bees because Springles can't shoot through these. There is a small gap here that you might be able to get shots out, but stone walls do block Springles from shooting. Instead, the Trebs are trying to target stuff out. Beastie. I mean, this is so frustrating. He's now trying to play towards the sacred sites. He's capped the southern one. Northern one was capped by B. That has to be frustrating as well. Like B, he did invest into the monastery and he only got one relic for it. So not a good feeling. Walls have been breached though. Keep is now being targeted. Maganels are being built though by Beastie. And a moment in, Pals got to get a rush through. And it looks like Lombos, they need to start pewing through this batting round quickly. No villagers being pulled forward to repair this keep either, so it has to survive by its own rights. The pass guard will back away. Five missile resistance, so fairly tanky up against the Lombos, but still scared about them. Villagers coming out as well. The repair crew is here, being scared away, but the Nesta Bees are going to juice up the full HP and they're going to roll through. And all of a sudden you have to back up. BC, he might be about to fail here. I think if you lose this forward strong point, you lose the game because it's going to be a flood out. There's just so many troops here now for B. Actually, I'm massing that of what BC has. The Trebs are going to be targeted. They're going to be burnt down the blink of an eye. Palace Guard still healthy enough to chase in. And remember, these boys are Zoomers. He did get the upgrade. One point. Oh, wait, no, he didn't. I'm baited. That was just a charge. 1.3 up, up to 1.69 means your gap closing. And these mana arms coming out from BC. I think it might be too little too late. This is way too little too late. The Siege Workshop District going up as well. Five racks to work with. But remember, in B's base, now having the edge, he already has those five racks, but has the forces out in the field. Now slow down for the moment, but my God. <laughs> well, that is a astronomical amount of Nesta B. Six of them from the astronomical clap tower. And four of them from a regular siege workshop. And he's still going for more. This is ridiculous. 12 nest of bees. Come on. I'm telling you, this is getting nerfed. Maganels and nest of bees are not being left as they are. I mean, it seems fitting that the man named B would be this invested in the unit. Uh, nest of bees for the realm of B. And it will be the undoing of Beastie. So many bees in this game. But right now, BC is yelling B at his forces. They need to get out of range. 
Siege Workshop's exposed. And I think this is done. He is well and truly cooked. BC got a little bit too close to the firework display and he is going up in a puff of smoke and particle effects. Nothing he can do. Heavy reliance on Lombos, decent amount of mana arms, but they will insta-die to this many Nesta Bs. Damage coming through. Palsguard holding back the mana arms and the splash is too high. He's just dead. Oh, this is just not reasonable. How is this fair? The number of Nesta Bs here, how would you counter this? Oh, and this is just disgusting. From the generation to the strategy employed by B, everything about this man is goddamn filthy. Beastie, I think, you know, he might want to go, go turn on a shower, sit down in the corner inside of it and start crying to himself because this, this leaves a scar on your mind. Look at the damage they do to the monastery as well. Everything Beastie worked for, but into a pile of smoke and rubble as 3DB will take the game.